100 years since the Grand Hall in Frankfurt was built. It's right behind me. And before we go in there and bring you all the details, let me welcome you to the Frankfurt Motor Show. Thanks for joining us on a brand new episode of the Car and Bike Show as well. And it's a lot of history that goes into all these German brands. This, of course, talks about Benz, it talks about Audi. And let me show you something a little bit special right at the top of the show. Take a look at this. This is the first car from Mercedes-Benz. It takes you all the way back to 1886. The idea was personal mobility, which was stress-free. And hey, we all talk about exactly the same thing even today, don't we? So you had, of course, just three wheels, a very basic carriage that was motorized. And take a look at this. 2009, we are talking about, well, almost uh, 130 years down the line. And uh, this is something that has been developed by a group of students and by Mercedes-Benz. It's a similar sort of a expression of mobility, if you will. It's the future of mobility in many ways because this is emissions-free. It's powered by a fuel cell. It seats two people. And the big change, of course, besides all of that, is the fact that it has four wheels. As you can see, there's plenty to take you through then on this episode. We're back at the Frankfurt Messe, and let's begin with a bang. Gorgeous in red, this is the all-new model from the Prancing Horse, the 458 Italia. The new sports car will replace the very popular F430, one of my favorite Ferraris of all time. That's the kind of response a new Ferrari will always get. It's difficult to create a car that is an icon right from the time it takes birth because every Ferrari has almost an onus on itself to do that. Now, with the Italia, you've got a completely new styling language that's come through. At the same time, one glance and you know it's a Ferrari. One quick point down here. This is not just a regular air, air scoop or an air intake. Aero-elastic winglets is what they call these. Now, what you see right now, of course, is a certain curvature, but uh, this is to create further downforce when you're driving. But as you start going faster, this just simply curves downwards and becomes one with uh, the lower lip, allowing a completely different aerodynamic appeal. And, uh, well, that's something brand new from Ferrari in terms of features. In terms of styling, of course, you can see that uh, the car has a very bold face up front. The headlamp cluster has been done in a very different style. And yet there is something quintessentially Ferrari about the way the hood has the two muscly shoulders coming up as uh, onto the fenders. Come around to the side, and then, of course, you can see that it's a very gradual sort of a sloping rear as you go further to the back. So, overall, it's a very, very attractive vehicle. Of course, it's going to do well in, uh, in red. It's also a yellow on the stand. Let's get you some more details on these cars. The first thing that grabs you when you step inside this vehicle, of course, is the wonderful fragrance of handcrafted leather. It's all finished impeccably but there's the other new feature on the inside which I definitely want to show you. The steering wheel is completely new for a Ferrari and that's because you've got a whole bunch of controls up here. The Manitino, of course, is the famous one which you can't do without. But besides that, the engine start-stop button, you've got the light control, indicators, even the wiper control is right up here on the steering wheel. Now, the reason for all of that and the horn, by the way, which you can barely see just tucked away into the actual steering handle. The reason for all of that is because, uh, well, Ferrari guys think that it's better control. Your hands never go off the wheel, and it's good from the safety point of view as well. So something new, you might see others adopting it, and definitely future Ferraris adopting it too.